Hi everyone, my name's Glenn. Welcome to the channel and welcome to today's video. I own a few telescopes and uh, one of my favourites uh, was an early scope that I bought which was the Skywatcher 130 PDS. A really nice, small, compact uh, Newtonian, really easy to use and it's a scope that you can uh, modify quite easily and up the performance from it. If you check through my videos you'll see I've got some tips on how to collimate and I've also got a load of tips on that actual scope of uh, modifications that I made to it and things I bought for it so it might be worth you having a look at those videos. I'll put a link in the description uh, below for you to make it easier to find. Last year I uh, splashed out and bought myself an Orion Optics UK CT10 because I wanted a much larger Newtonian. Now this was an expensive scope but uh, it's, it's really lovely and I love it to bits. But it had a few changes in it that the 130 PDS didn't have and uh, I wanted to see whether if I made the changes to the 130 PDS would it improve its performance. So the things I'm talking about are inside the Skywatcher. The focus tube is silver, the mirrors, well, they've actually got like a silver paint around the edge on the uh, secondary, but it's it was patchy, it's not all the way round, uh, there's bits where there's no paint at all, not a particularly great finish. So on the CT10, everything's painted black. So what I wanted to do was do the same for the Skywatcher and see whether or not that would improve its performance. So what we're going to do is go down my workshop, we're going to completely strip the 130 PDS and uh, I'm going to paint the mirrors. So I've bought some uh, blackboard paint, um, I've bought some spray for the tube because I wanted that to be a light coat and I've bought some uh, actual pot of paint, blackboard paint for the mirrors because I'm not going to be able to spray them because there's a danger of getting over spray and we don't want any paint on that uh, mirror surface whatsoever. So we're going to go down there, get that work done, uh, and I've got that all, get that all documented for you. And then what I'm hoping to do is a follow-up video where, fingers crossed, we get some clear skies, I can then test the scope and get some more images. So um, I'm really hoping this weekend, actually, it's due to be clear. So with any luck, we'll have some images to look at and see how well it's performing. But uh, if you are thinking of getting a, a Skywatcher 130 PDS or the 150 or something similar, I'd recommend you go for that because I think they're priced really well and you get a lot of scope for your money. Um, and, I, and I love them. So let's go and see if we can improve the performance of this scope. Okay, so the scope's been removed from the uh, rings and what we need to do now is take uh, the scope apart. Um, what I've done here is I've put two pieces of tape and uh, just run the standing knife to cut them um, so that I know that I can put the top and tail back in the same uh, lineup that it's uh, been taken off. So I'm going to start off by removing the primary mirror and the reason why I'm going to take the back end primary mirror off first is what I don't want to do is while I'm undoing other parts of the scope is have anything, uh, ha remove the risk of anything falling down and hitting that primary mirror. So there's four screws around the base here and we'll just quickly undo these. With those four screws removed and we can gently tease out the primary mirror. Obviously be careful here because this is your one of your main optics and there it is removed. And um, one of the things I'm looking to do is take the glass out. I'm actually gonna be painting the outside of this mirror black and the back and uh, we'll also be giving everything a good clean. So I need to put this 
to the side, somewhere safe. And we'll uh, just cover that over with a little cleaning cloth. Okay, so now that the primary mirror is out of the way, that removes a lot of dangers of anything falling down and hitting the mirror. So next I'm gonna remove this front collar. Now this doesn't remove the secondary mirror with it. I mean the screws are exactly the same as the other end, so it won't matter if they're put together and mixed up. And then this collar should slide out also. As I say, we've got the tape cut there, so we know we can put it back in the same place. And we'll put that with the rings. Now the next job will be to remove the secondary mirror. Now, when we put it back, we've got adjustments with these to get this in the center. And uh, when we come back to do that, we'll be using some vernier calipers to get everything back to its same place. So these just unscrew. Now what I'm doing is I'm just holding on to the secondary mirror because what I don't want it to do is fall down and obviously damage the mirror in any way. So make sure you've got one hand on the mirror and we just undo all these four bolt or nuts. We've got one more on the other side and it's gonna be free after this one so I'm just holding it in place and just very gently you should be able to move the mirror out. And there's our secondary mirror. This looks like it do with a bit of a clean. But what we're looking to do is um, paint all of the outsides of this so that we really do uh, keep the light, no light from getting in or escaping and uh, trying to improve the contrast as best we can. Okay, this needs to be put somewhere safe now. So I'm uh, just going to have a look at how it stands. Oh, it's quite stable actually, so I'm just going to move that over there and get that out of the way. So now we've both the mirrors removed, the next job is to remove the focuser. Now I'm not going to take this apart. Um, the only part I'm interested in is this uh, silver tube that goes into the actual scope. So I want to paint that black. Um, so inside there are some bolts and there you've got some screws on the outside. If you hold on to the bolt, they're not very long and they come apart like so. And we can remove the whole unit. Let's have a look at that one, there we go. The screwdriver's working well with the magnet. And again, when we get towards the last screw, we're just going to support the focuser because we don't want anything falling and getting damaged. So I'm just going to keep my hand on it there. I wonder if I can... Oh, focus tube's in the way. Let's just move that up. That's better. Ah, oh, yep. Yeah. Just hold that with my hand not heavy but that comes off very easily okay and there's my tube so I just want to keep them together don't want them getting lost and this is my uh, focuser and what I'm gonna do I'm not going to take it apart I want to try and keep it all complete because it works extremely nicely um, it's got nice tension on it I'm got some black spray and I'm just going to spray the outside of this tube so that the part that's exposed inside this reflective or silver color has gone um, so I'm going to need to mask this up so that I don't get any overspray on the rest of the uh, scope because I don't want that to be ruined okay right so let's just put that to one side a second the tube is actually quite a nice matte black inside. Now people flock the insides of these, but I don't know if I'm gonna to need to do that. Um, as I say, I've got some uh, chalk paint 
Um, so I'm going to be using, I've got it here, chalkboard paint. So I'm hoping that this is a really nice uh, matte black. I'm going to have a look at that in a moment. And I've also got some blackboard paint. So that too, with a brush, uh, I'm going to be using that to paint the mirrors because obviously it's going to be difficult to do the mirrors uh, and not get any uh, overspray on them, which we don't want at all. That would be a disaster. So um, we'll have a look at the tube later and see whether that needs anything. But uh, for now, that's everything apart. And now we're going to start painting. So this is uh, black ball paint. Um, and I'm assuming that this is gonna be the best form of paint for this job. I uh, just assumed that it will be a matte finish. I'm about to find out. Okay, so I've given it a good shake. It should be very black. Got some very small brushes here. I'm going to take the smallest brush. It's nice and black, I'll tell you that. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I'm planning to just literally paint the outside of this mirror. Um, I'm just gonna be nice and careful. And uh, shouldn't get any on the mirror. If I do, I'm in trouble. I don't think it's going to be that easy to get off, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a good paint. And then after I've painted it, my plan will be to give the mirror a good clean before we put it back. got enough black paint here to do about a thousand telescopes I think but that's okay we'll just give this a good coating of paint I don't think it's going to need a second coat but if it does we've got plenty of paint here to do that just want to get around there now I know on my CT10 the uh, the back of the mirror and the sides of the mirror are painted black and that's the same now um, it looks like uh, Skywatcher put like a silver paint but it was patchy there wasn't very much on there there was bits where there was no paint there was bits where there was paint so not overly impressed with the finish that they did um, and I think what I've done is going to improve things a little bit Right, so that's the secondary mirror painted black. And now that it's painted, the next job will be to actually clean the mirror, but that will be done on another day. I want that to proper dry. Okay, just put that to the side. I'm just gonna have a very quick look now at the primary mirror. Now that's held in by these clips. I'm actually just going to move this to a different area so it's completely out of the way. I just want to have a look at these clips and then we'll see how easy it is to paint this mirror. So what I'm going to do is just very gently
undo these screws. They're quite long. So I've never had this off before. So it'd be very interesting to see what this looks like. So they're like on a rubber clip with a metal bit on the top. Interesting. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do with the other two is I'm going to loosen them, not take the screw out, because the whole clip lifts out with the screw. Now, what I would like to do is I want to put the mirror back in the same place on here as I take it out. So before I take the mirror out, I need to be aware of its orientation and, and make some kind of uh, mark or something so that I know where it belongs. Now I'm looking here and there's actually already a mark on the mirror by this clamp. So what I might do is use that as my gauge. So what I'm going to do, I've got a Sharpie here. We've got this arc that's over the center of that. I'm not actually going to mark it, I'm going to work with that, I think. Now, how easy does this mirror lift up? Very easy. And it's sitting on some cork pads. And this is the light uh, shield from the back. <laughs> it's very basic, isn't it? Um, and that obviously mirror just rests on there and the adjustment is actually done for the mirror on 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 a ring so you can see I can see there you've got these locking and then when you these are sprung loaded and and you you get the uh, the ring lined up and then these lock it back down so it doesn't move. Yeah, interesting. Okay. So here's the mirror. And it's very interesting. The back is completely clear. Like that. Now, I don't know whether that should be black or not. I'm a bit concerned whether if I paint that, it's gonna spoil things, I don't know. I know that the edge can be painted, but I'm not too sure about the back. So I'm gonna to have to think about that and look into it.
So that's the primary mirror painted. Now, and my next job is just to have a look at this. So we want to spray this silver bit that sticks up in the focus tube black. So um, we'll get some uh, masking tape. trying to think that we don't need to go over the top with this but what I would like to do is protect the top of the focus I certainly don't want any paint on that I'm thinking of actually putting a bag over the whole of the top and then just using this tape to seal it up so we'll just see what I've got in a moment I've got some bags that I put things in these are just like food bags or sandwich bags if you call them Let's have a look here. I just want to. That's good. Okay, so we can just pull these bits up, and that's pretty much going to stop any paint getting into areas that I don't want it. Cool. Right. Okay. So now we want to just give this a paint. So I think I will take this outside to spray, and that will be the best idea. Okay, so. What I didn't quite get was the inside is painted black but this bit which catches the light from outside isn't. So what we're looking to do is not spray my hand. Right. So what we're looking to do is give this very light coat we're not looking for a car finish we are just looking to get it covered in black and then let that dry okay so now the focus tube has been sprayed black we will let that dry and then we'll remove all of the uh, masking and then we'll make sure everything's working and then uh, we're in a better position to start thinking about cleaning the mirrors and then putting the scope back together okay so it's the next day all the paints nice and dry so the next job is to put everything back together I'm going to start with the uh, focuser and then we're going to put in the secondary mirror and then finally the primary mirror and get everything back together and then we're going to do a rough collimation and then I'll do a more uh, in-depth collimation afterwards so uh, let's get this back together So that's the three clips back. I just want to make sure the mirror's being held firmly, which it is. I just don't want to over tighten them. So I'm just literally making sure there's some nice tension on the clips. They're, they're not completely tightened, but this is rubber, this mount, so 
they shouldn't damage the mirror but I don't want them over tight what we don't want to do is cause any distortions or pinch the optics in any way I think you'd have to go some to do that with them but that's the primary mirror put back into the uh, shell shell there so that's ready to go back on the scope but I'm going to put the secondary mirror in first well actually I'm going to put the focuser in first and then the secondary mirror this lives this way So that's the four screws tightened up on the focuser so that's back on and that's looking good right now the the uh, that that is uh, reinstalled the next thing to put back in is the spider with the secondary mirror so it can only go in one way where it's facing the thing the uh, the actual focuser there are the holes to uh, get it. Now, the important thing is to get the spacing right between the spider. So there is adjustment, but I'm gonna use my vernier calipers for this job. So I'm just gonna get all four screws engaged. And then I'm gonna have a little measure up and then work on the spacing because we want this obviously in the center so we just get these engaged because these will hold it in place it's actually uh, not as hard to put back as you think um, I thought it was gonna it could have been fiddly when I very first saw scopes, I thought, oh, don't fancy doing anything like that, but it's not that bad at all. Best thing to use for something like this is some uh, vernier calipers. I've got some digital ones here. Um, we want the same distance between this and the edge and here, and then the same here and here, and then we know that that is then centrally placed. So a little bit of measuring needed. So I'm sticking with the same technique that I used when I took it apart in that I'm, the last thing I'm gonna put back is the primary mirror. So there's no danger of any screws falling down and hitting that primary mirror. So we'll just get this gone and we've got our white tape that we cut when we uh, took this off so we can put this in exactly the same position and the tape's lined up perfectly, so that's good. Okay. So now we're gonna be looking at the primary mirror. So I made a point of uh, making sure the mirror went back in the same way that it came out of the holder um, so I was pleased with that a little hair there let's just make sure this is clear all looking good this can only go back one way where my tape is which is there okay back in just needs a little twist to get the holes lined up that's my tapes lined up again we just locate the four screws and then we'll do them up So that is the scope back together. I'm just taking the uh, tape off that made out marks for me. So 
So that's the scope basically rebuilt and uh, back in its rings. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to spend a bit of time with it. Um, I'm going to move my electronic automatic focuser back onto here from my Zenith Star 61. I really do need to get another one, but uh, that can wait for now. And uh, I'm going to get the camera on here and I'm going to get it all loaded up and get all the wires uh, done, uh, the wire management done. So that it's nice and neat on the EQ6R Pro and then I'm ready to get a first light. So the next time I see you it should be in a nice dark starry sky where we'll hopefully get a nice image and see if this is now performing even better than it did before.